Mm. Our guest this evening is not from the oil and gas sector, but he's from the extractive industry. The similarities are clear. I mean, every day we hear about uh, the difficulties we've had with our natural resources. Gold is said not to have done us great. Now oil is around the corner. Is that correct? What are the lessons? What can we take from our experience with gold mining to ensure that oil and gas truly becomes a blessing for this beautiful country? My guest is the executive director of WACAM, the WASA Association of Communities Affected by Mining. I'm told they don't even break it up these days. They just say WACAM. So tonight we'll be, we'll be getting a sense from him about where the difficulties are, what the experiences are, and how he feels we can truly take things forward with oil. Daniel Wusu thank you. Thank coming. you. So I'm not quite sure where to start with you. You spent many years in extractive industry business. Uh, you're on uh, another side of it. There are the mines, there are the communities. Then you have an organization like yours that said it's there to support the communities, like a voice for them. Before I get into detail, you must tell me how long has Wacom been in existence and why did you decide that the people in the communities could not speak for themselves? Thank you. I'm, I'm very happy to, to be on this program. It's uh, more of a privilege. Thank you. Um, it's quite um, some interesting history. Um, the history is that my background is that I'm, I'm an agriculturist. I'm not a miner. I mean, I hold a degree in uh, agriculture. And I was working with the Minister of Agriculture with, um, with my wife, who was also working with the Minister of Agriculture as the head of a um, uh, women's division in the Wasa West District. And mind you, this is the third gold rush we are having. Mm -hmm. We have had you know, two past gold rushes. We normally call them um, the jungle booms. So this is the third jungle boom, which started in the in the eighties. And then um, I think the World Bank and the the um, the IMF decided that it you know, Ghana could increase her dependence on uh, the extractive to solve solve economic problems. So we made laws, you know, PNDC Law One Five Three, to attract mining, and we provided generous incentives. You know. So we call this law as a you know, promotional law. Mm -hmm. And then in the Wasa West District, about seven mining companies located in the area. Western region. Wasa West. In the, yeah, Wasa West District is in the Western region. Mm -hmm. Now it's called the Takwan Swayim Municipal Assembly. Mm -hmm. And I was there working with my wife as agriculturist. And then we had first-hand information on the problems of mining on peasants. Mm -hmm. Initially, there were high expectations. The, the farmers thought that mining could bring development. The mining companies cast on it. They mm. whipped up mm. and scaled up their, their expectations. Mm. You know, people were happy. Mm. Then three years down the line, you know, there were problems. So as I was, my wife and I were working in the Ministry of Agriculture and then having first had experiences on the problems of, of the peasant farmers, mm. we started writing in a normal official reports about the effect of mining on, you know, on the communities. And then somewhere along there, we realized that it was impossible. So we started organizing the communities. That you needed to get to need action rather than words. Yes, that, rather than words. Mm. We, we realized, you know, capacity gap. The mining companies are powerful. They have money. They are well organized. The communities have no money, very high illiteracy. Where is their organized. government? Where is their government? <laughs> eh? that is the well, government that's supposed to represent them and protect them. Where is their government? Government was the promoter of mining, you know. So it, it, it was more of a contradiction where government was acting as a promoter of mining and also regulating. You know. So we left this, you know, when I say we, I would say all Ghanaians, we left these poor people to, to impeach them against the, the powerful mining companies. They were, they were sort of directly negotiating? Negotiating or? on a number of issues, sometimes technical issues. Yes. You know, compensation, uh, resettlement, yeah. you know, sometimes when there's a sunrise village, yeah. very technical things. Yeah. Then we, we had a passion and we started organizing um, the communities, still working with the public service. Yeah. And um, I want to cut a long story short. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, uh, we needed to set up an organization mm. because we realized that the, the mining companies are powerful. They have their own organization, mm. Chamber of Mines, mm. talking for them. Mm. And then we also realized a gap in mm. terms of even the point around which communities could get organized because mm. the, uh, excuse me to say that some of the chiefs mm. had become part of the mining lobby, mm. you know, through contracts and you know, through other um, benefits that they were having. They, they had become allies. So the communities were disorganized, they were left on their own. And we felt that the first thing that we should do is to get them organized. So we organized them ar around what we used to call the WASA Association of Communities Affected by, by Mining. <music> Thank you.
Labadi Beach Hotel, Ghana's finest. Experience, dedication, passion. These are the attributes every master craftsman needs to produce a work of true distinction. And it is with the same meticulous attention to detail that we make our beer, Club Gold. Produced with only the finest, carefully selected and blended natural ingredients, including crystal malt, to give you that smooth, golden, distinguished taste. Enjoy the unique drinking experience of a full-bodied crystal malt beer. The difference is in the detail. Enjoy your moment with Club Gold. Let's move on to oil and gas, I mean, which is the main reason that, that, that I wanted you to, 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 to join us today. Uh, what are the lessons that we can learn from mining? Um, thank David. Um, first and foremost, I think that when we had the third jungle boom, which was also a technological change, we changed from underground mining to surface mines. We had not had much experience as a nation mm. on surface mining. And it, it was a new area, and there, there were new challenges. And we should have taken our time to build capacity. Yeah. Our own capacity, the regulators should have had capacity, the communities should have built their capacity, NGOs should have built capacity. But it was a political and technological shift where we, we left the you know, government, um, left the, uh, its involvement in... In, um, in gold mining, which was the state gold mining you know, Company. uh, companies, and then brought in foreign direct investment. But that was a good thing, was it not? I mean, really, I, it, I, mean, I mean, Mr. Coranting, I mean, that was when really gold mining took off. It, it depends on how you position, you position yourself mm -hmm. to negotiate good deals when you are handing over to the private sector. Let me ask you a question before you... Uh, People, some people suggest that gold mining in Ghana has not done anything for Ghana. We've just, we've just really not gained from it. Is that what you also think? We haven't fared well. Uh -huh. But you can't say that mining has not done anything mm -hmm. at all. Well, why do you say that? Yeah, I think the World Bank and the IMF, that actually you know, supported the idea of um, increasing dependence on, on mining, gold mining, for example, had at the back of their mind that we should engage in, uh, we should be able to reduce poverty. When we have growth, we should be able to reduce poverty. Now, at the end of the day, what I ask, uh, the question is, have we, have we been able to reduce poverty? We have not. Uh, and, and the no, answer no, we is, have not. We have not. We are, it, it, poverty has even exacerbated. In mining communities. In mining communities. Yeah. So, that is, that is the first point. Yeah. Uh, the next point is on the national basis. Yeah. For example, we have been talking about um, employment creation from using mining to generate employment. Now, when you talk on net basis, if we go to the communities and the livelihood losses, the displacement of communities and the mm. livelihood, the extent of livelihood loss mm. and the generation of employment by mining companies, if we talk on net basis, it's deficit. Does it mean, does it mean that all the royalties that mining companies pay uh, are just, is simply insufficient or something? I mean, why... why why? I mean, I, I just want us to get to this clearly yeah. because there's an activity. The understanding is that people will come in mind, government will tax, it will charge royalties, and so on and so forth. That's what you get and what you use to develop the community and so on. It is not the foreign company that should come and build roads and water in Obosia. That's not their, their business. That's our business. Okay, so what is your view on that? that? Then let's go into the fiscal arrangements. 
yeah. which, which will give us an understanding of how much we are giving out and how much we are getting. Yeah. For example, um, the mining companies have capital allowance mm. and then investment allowance. Of 70, the capital allowance 75% and then investment allowance 5%. So in the first year, for example, they can write off you know, 75, 80% of their investment. For the first year. For the first year. And after that. And after the 50 50 percent, you know, in remaining subsequent years. Subsequent years. Yeah. And and that makes sure that we we don't get much um, corporate tax, you know, income tax from mm. companies mm. because after writing off about 80 percent of their investment and whatnot, mm. then what is left to be taxed mm. is said that they, it will be negative. And it's 50 percent for the rest of the time. No, throughout? for no remaining until they write off their investment, which is normally what sort of period, three to yeah, four years, about three to four years or something. So after By that, which time uh, they may be winding up and changing, you know, into uh, another into another form. Uh, now, if we if we take every um, gold export levy, they are exempted. Customs duty, they are exempted. Why do they have I mean, all I mean, these mineral, exemptions? Mineral, so why? Why do they have all these exemptions? That is why I, we were saying that the, the, the law that we put up was a promotional law. Mm. It was a law to promote mining. Which is justifiable, so, is it not, for no, a while? But then, now that no, the mining is exploding, you don't keep the same yeah, law. I, I, think, I think that, you know, there's, there's a thin line. Mm. There's a thin line between um, um, liberalization mm. and sellout. Mm. No. Sometimes you, you think, think that you, you, think, are, you are. You think we, we have sold, sold, out. sold out. We sold out. Sold out Clearly. meaning that. Sorry, I mean, we didn't, we, there was no benefit. <laughs> minimal. Minimal benefits, I would say. So, what, what, what happens is that we, we, there are so many subsidies. There are subsidies that are so many. These, these we, apply across board for all mining companies? Um, or this is more for, with some than others? Um, if, if you even have an investment port portfolio of more than. Five hundred million dollars. You even have further generous concessions. You can even defer royalty payment, negotiate it. These no laws defer. were made when we were trying to attract investment in the mineral sector. Is that correct? Yeah, at the time when, when probably the gold price was low. In the eighties, early in the 80s, 80s. Yeah. Have these laws been changed in any way over the period? Interestingly, the PNDC law one five three was the five three was the first one. Mm -hmm. When we reformed it into PNDC law, I uh, know, sorry, uh, Minerals and Mining Act. 703 of 2006, we, we further lowered the, the, the bar. For example, the, in the PNDC 153, investment uh, royalty rate was between 3 to 12%. Mm. In the um, uh, Minerals and Mining Act, we scaled it down to 3 to 6%, and all mining companies are paying 3%. 3 to 5 and 3 to 6, that's not scaling down. No, the first one was 3 to 12. Right. Yes, the okay. PNDC 153, it was 3 to 12. And then in the, in the Minerals and Mining Act, the recent one, is three to six. Is that perhaps because they are not attracting investment? I mean, what it, is the motivation? It, it, you know, it, is because, it is because the mining lobby globally is so strong. And the mining lobby um, tried to convince our governments that Tanzania, Mali, Guinea had what they called competitive laws, mm. you know, mm. which meant that the, the standards were quite lower than ours. Mm. So, so we, we have to come reform down to come down. That's what we call the, the race to the bottom. Let's take on the royalty issue so we can come to the oil and gas thing. Royalties. I'm coming back to my question. What happens to royalties? Is it insufficient? It is, it is not sufficient. It so, is it not is, sufficient. so it is not sufficient? No, it is not so sufficient. So you would like to see an increase in the rate of royalty? It is very, very important. What sort of percentage do you think would make no, sense? I think we should move to the, to the highest point of 6%. And let, let, me, let, me mention, let me mention that there are issues even within how we, 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 we value the gold, which has been brought up by um, an aggregator that was uh, commissioned by the government of Ghana, the Minister of Finance. And what has come out is clearly that we don't even know how much gold we are producing. We don't know how much gold we are producing. Yes, because we don't have an independent um, uh, uh, body. Um, body to even look at the... the Figures that are coming out. So, what does the Minerals Commission do? Now, what does the Ministry do? Yeah. Now, if you look at the custom officers that are attached to the mining companies, yeah, they are providing us information on the quantity of gold produced and not their sale values. And even different companies have different uh, what do you call it um, exchange rates for calculating you know, royalty. It, it sounds and, it know. sounds like it's there's no order. I mean. What I mean, it sounds like we don't have a grip of the issues. Yes, and money, Is that what you're saying? Yes, and mining companies are paying you know, ground rent yes. of about 50 Ghana pesos for one square kilometer land. 
50 Ghana pesos. And if you take Anglo Vodashan, that's about 333 um, kilometers square land. It pays about 167 Ghana cities as grand rent per year. And these are issues that should come up, that we should address. Labadi Beach Hotel, Ghana's finest. Learn seriously, play seriously, win seriously, work seriously, relax seriously, invest seriously, smile seriously, love seriously, dream seriously, live seriously, stay connected wherever. Serious speed, serious service, serious savings. Ibis Africa, serious internet. Are you in need of credible and relevant business information to make vital decisions? Or do you wish to reach Ghana's up market business and consumer segment with your product and services? Subscribe to and advertise in Business and Financial Times today, Africa's leading source of credible and relevant business information. For enquiries, contact 021-785-3667 or visit www.thebftonline.com. So what kind of response do you get from the government when you raise these issues of inequity and in many cases, you know, just downright loss? I think we are not getting the, the, the mathematics right. We are not computing the, the, the... We are not putting in a lot of factors. Now, if, if government gets about $46.7 million, um, dollars, say, for, from, from mining, we, we take that as profit. We don't even consider the social you know, issues in terms of displacement of communities, pollution of rivers, the subsidies the companies have had in terms of... The costs are the too cost high. That's are what you're too saying. High. Is that a threat for oil and gas? No. Get coming into the oil. Yes. The, I'm raising the issue of capacity, which from hindsight knowledge in terms of the gold sector, we didn't have capacity to address the challenges that are coming up. From. So what and kind then, of capacity do you need with oil and gas? Regulation. Strong regulation. You're talking about the, reg the capacity of government to put in place laws and laws. Yes. We don't have that. We have a semblance of laws which I think cannot address what we have now. How, do you, how do you fix that, sir? Um, I think um, our, our leaders, our policymakers, should learn from the gold sector because the oil business is another area of, that demands a lot of negotiating capacity. And I think also that we are rushing as a nation into the oil. Because if we take from um, 2007, June or July, when we found the oil in commercial quantities, and then in October or November, we are pouring. It's about pouring, you know, we are prepared to pour oil. Mm -hmm. It's about 40 months or something like that. It's a very short period to build capacity. But you need to do in order to learn. You can't sort of sleep, say you want to not do anything, build capacity before you start. In real life, it doesn't work like that, does it, sir? No, I, I think we are dealing with non-renewable um, assets. And we have so much experience with gold mining. I mean, isn't it strange that, I mean, you say this, I mean, after all, all this experience with gold, we should be by now in a position where we know what to do with oil? We haven't lent. That we is, that is what I think. Yeah, yeah, we haven't lent. And and I think that in terms of capacity in the oil, now NGOs are now trying to build capacity. Intellectuals are building capacity. Our, our parliamentarians are now building capacity. Everybody is now trying to learn. Yeah, experts. Meanwhile, the, the industry is on top of issues. They know the industry. They know what to get. They are prepared to protect their interests. How are we dealing with environmental issues? Offshore, when even the gold that we see the mountains of waste that we cannot deal with, the abandoned pests, the displacement of com communities, the pollution of rivers. We did a research, and we found out that 250 rivers in Obwasi and Takwa are polluted. They have higher you know, levels of heavy metals and cyanide than the permissible levels of, of EPA and WHO. The mining companies and, will suggest that the Galamze boys are the responsible for that. Well, they might contribute to it, you know, but, but that, the, the companies also have their share of it. No, so we, we cannot, this is not an area that you can, you know. Blame on small scale. Yeah. So we, we need to understand that. The, sometimes people say that the offshore oil 
doesn't might not have because there are no the communities on the sea on the sea yeah. and then we we may not have serious environmental issues on hand yeah. i think today the argument might be settled because of the what we are the lessons that we are supposed to learn from the the government's good problems yeah but that's well, an accident that, that, that that's that's a, an extraordinary event that aside is it not correct no, that because the oil is offshore the, the impact go, is go, not the, you you go to you know some of the communities princess town and whatnot um 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 some of the communities in the along the, coast, along the coast, coastal coast. communities they've started losing their lands yeah People who are speculating, who are speculators, they're buying land. They're buying their land at cheap prices. At cheap prices. I've heard about that. So how do you, cheap prices? You see, we and we say this all the time. It's in the news. Everybody knows this. Nothing is done about it. How, and that's what I want you and I to try and come. Uh, to. There's a certain collusion between some chiefs and some speculators. Mm. You know, I, I know of one community. I I think for purposes of no, it's all right, I, you don't have to mention. You have to mention. The, the, but I have the to the mention chief, to me later. On, later on, I can do that. <laughs> The, the communities now have no land to farm on. Part of the right land, now, right now, this is related to part, oil. Yes, part of the land is being um, um, used as a, a concession for one of the big mining companies in Ghana, and the remaining land has also been taken over by by land speculators in terms of the oil. I am aware that some of the community leaders are mm. going round. Begging some of the people who have bought the land, begging them that they should release on the land for them to farm on and eat. So, if, if somebody thinks that they, they, I'm not even coming to you know the issue of fishermen. Mm. I'm talking about even land speculators, and and that is that is becoming a major issue now. So people should not think that you know because the the the, the oil is being um, exploited offshore, we wouldn't have the problems. The problems are there, and then we come to even. The issue of uh, fishermen and the the counter argument is oh it's a small area that is being used you know the effect may be mm. so minimal. Mm. We need to understand the effects. We need to understand the long term problems that are coming up. We are using uh, a, a single hauled um, FPSO. Mm. There are a lot of international arguments against that, mm. but, but there are also arguments that are for it. That it it is it is it is it is. It is one of the arguments I hear is that mm. in the kind of ocean in which it is sitting, the risks are, are much less than if it was elsewhere. That, these, are some of the, these are some of the things that I get afraid with, yeah. some of the arguments yeah. that, yeah. that serve the interests of, of companies. Yeah. We had similar arguments in the mining sector. Yeah. That the regulators are on top of issues, we, don't have, we are being regulated, we don't have the problems, but go to the, pro the communities. The issues are there. That's true, that's true. But I want us to talk about something now, because really, otherwise we go on forever. This is the responsibility of the government of Ghana, not the mining companies. That's what I want to say. Do you agree with that? Because if we don't, we can spend all our time blasting them and talking, but in reality, I mean, wh what do you want them to do, to, to come and look after you? I mean... Do you agree that the trouble is that our own governments must get their act right? I agree. Government has ultimate responsibility to protect the rights of people, of the communities or, and citizens. This is a sovereign nation. Mm. It is the people that voted government to power. Mm. Multiple, nationals have not voted government to power. Governments have social contracts with us and they have to ensure that we should be the first you know, uh, uh, point of, of protection of, of, of uh, uh, rights. Yeah. Beyond that, you must also realize that we live in a, in a global situation. Mm. The power of the mining lobby through the Britain Woods institutions mm. in the mining law, in the, the, in, the, in the mining sector, it is the, the, the Britain Woods institutions that actually pushed the mining laws. So you must mm. also understand you know, that some, sometimes government is also vulnerable. Mm. You know, and, and when it comes to multinationals in the extractive sector, in the oil sector, government becomes very, very vulnerable. It sounds... The, very, the, it, the next point is mm. also that. Mm. Who benefits from these bad laws? It is the companies. If, if we even have to compute how much subsidies the, the poor com communities have provided to the mining companies through um, a very small compensation that they pay, the poor farmers are subsidizing the mining companies. Companies have, have been having um, subsidies from energy for a long time. So, I'm not surprised that the former president, um, President Yukumikofo, said that we have minimal benefits from mining. Yeah. 
a lot of the politicians were saying it. But what to do about it? What was the, was, was the problem? Absolutely. Now, when it comes to the oil, we are thinking that we can use a very short period to rush into some laws that can regulate the company. You know, the company. The practical problem that will arise will be enforcement of even the weak laws, which we have experienced in the mining sector, mm. and even gaps. Mm. You know, gaps in which because we cannot even anticipate. In the, in, the, in the sector of, uh, of mining, we were not able to anticipate, you know, win for profits in terms of a high gold price and did not, you know, um, negotiate what we call additional profit tax or win for profit tax mm. in the current law. Mm. And now the mining companies are reaping, you know, win for profits. And we as a nation, we are losing our, our resources at a very fast rate because when the gold price is high, every, every investor, we should make maximum money. We no. have learned, haven't we? My understanding is that with, 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 with oil, the royalty issues are, 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 are slightly different. But let's assume it's a 5% royalty. Then you have equity, like the mining. Then I'm told there's additional oil entitlement depending on the price. Then there's all the taxation and so on. So the government itself says, confirming what the foreign companies say, that we are looking at more than 50% of the income and so the majority is coming to us is that correct my my worry my worry are practical things you can have these things written in books i don't want to talk about some experience i had in in austria so what you're saying is our but people should make sure we get we have the... what we call the agency problems the agency problem is that when you and i are asleep there should be somebody overlooking even how much is being pumped <laughs> into tankers yeah. when you and i are asleep on the mm. sea mm. you know how is that person going to protect national interests? These are practical things. And th these things have happened that they are probably very close to us, Nigeria. Mm. Finally, local content. Could you get the equivalent of Galamze with oil and gas? Um, Can you see something like that happen? I mean, when you look at the... the because in a way, Galamze is some form of local content, isn't it? The small-scale mining. I mean, better still, not Galamze. It's, it's a very complicated thing. That's complicated. Yeah, it borders on illegality, pollution of rivers, yeah. and how to how yeah. we'll be able to balance yeah. protection of, of, of the environment mm. with uh, some level of involvement of people in, in, uh, in our local people. And that risk... And, and, and let, mind you, the, the area, the small-scale mining is being controlled now by Koreans, That's what you said Chinese, recently, I find extraordinary. Chinese, so it is not the no, small-scale mining we know. The people who died. Yes. Uh, are people working for big time people, big time foreigners, foreigners who don't want to come in a big way for them to be regulated. They so they, they fund, if you like, the yeah. small scale money. Yeah. So that is that is the that is the issue now. Daniel, that's the you challenge. Are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you make it seem like we are doomed. Oh, there's there's hope. The, the hope lies in what you are doing. Mm. You provide the opportunity for people to understand and discuss mm. the issues. Transparency. Yeah, that's transparency. Where that's where the hope is. But as, as I indicated earlier on, the, the agency problem is a major issue that we need to address. Yeah. We, are getting, we, are, we are getting people to be educated. We are building their capacity. But if they are not oriented towards the corporate Ghana forget interest, it. forget it. Daniel Wuzu Granti, thank you so much. Thank you very much. I appreciate for you this coming. Opportunity. Thank we you. We should talk again. Yeah, thank you.